Hey, I'm Christian, and thanks for tuning in to PN Wreckage, home of trucks, guns, and other things that make noise. It's time to sound off about one of the most polarizing features of all, and that is the nine-speaker Alpine stereo. A quick Google search will show you a variety of opinions about this feature, and those range from people who absolutely hate it to people who absolutely think it's the best thing that's ever been put in a Ram truck. I fall into the category of people who really love it. I had it on my last truck and I wouldn't have gotten this one without it. Some things to keep in mind, it is standard on the Laramie trim, Laramie Longhorn, and Limited trims. It is an option on the Power Wagon, the Bighorn, the Lone Star, and the SLT, and it is not an option on the Tradesman trim. If you elect for it, it's a $445 option, and it's actually not a 9-speaker stereo, it is a 10-speaker stereo. You have one subwoofer under the rear seat, which occupies about 60% or so of the space underneath the 60-40 split for storage. You also have three speakers in the dash, one by each A-pillar, and one right in the center that has the Alpine logo on it. There's a speaker in the driver and passenger side doors, and two speakers in the ceiling for a total of 10. There are two features of this sound system that I think it's important that you activate and play with so you can kind of get the sound that you want. One of them is just a simple equalizer that talks about lows, mids, and highs. The other is the surround sound option. I think it really adds to the overall clarity of the sound, and I've always really liked car stereos, or excuse me, home stereos, that have that center speaker that does a little bit of vocals and a little bit of mid-range as well. The speakers in the doors are actually low-range only. Uh, they're designed to augment some of the lows and some of the mids, and then you have basically high-end or higher-end sound coming out of the dash speakers and the ones in the ceiling for the rear passengers. There is some evidence that it would be cheaper for you to completely upgrade the standard six-speaker stereo to your liking in terms of adding a subwoofer or changing your speakers out and really customizing it. Despite that, I'm a big fan of how this sounds. I listen to a wide variety of music, anything from country to hip-hop, a little bit of classic rock, and really whatever ends up getting played in the truck when I'm on a road trip. I think it really does a nice job of accurately representing how those songs are supposed to sound. I think the mids are a little bit higher than they maybe need to be, uh, but it does have a really nice bass sound, and I am sort of a sucker for bass. Uh, not excessive amounts, but I do like that thump. It's an 8-inch, 150-watt subwoofer under the rear seat, and the overall wattage or power of the system is about 506 watts. Some people replace the speakers in the dash, like the ones by the A-pillars, with aftermarket speakers. You have to be really careful with that because they're a 2-ohm speaker, so ensure that you're doing your research and not buying something that's going to throw off the equalizer or throw off the balance between front and rear. Although I had to give up 60% of my storage to be able to get this, I think that's a worthwhile investment. It's a factory subwoofer, it's covered under your warranty, and for $445, I think it's really a must-have option. You do not need to have the 8.4 Uconnect for this system. It is available on the smaller Uconnect. However, again, it is gonna cost you a relatively substantial amount of money, although there is an argument for some people actually spending more than that on just their head unit when upgrading their truck or car stereo. I was pretty surprised at the settings it came from, or came from the factory with, and I actually thought that either the sales guys or somebody on a test drive had messed with the settings on my previous truck, but I really liked them, so I kept them anyway. This one, the first thing I did was check it when I got it. It was a custom order, and no one test drove it prior to me, other than my sales guy. And unless he actually got things exactly the same as the previous people did, I don't think he actually messed with it, and I think that's how it comes from the factory. It surprised me that the lows were almost all the way up, the mids were pretty high, and the highs were almost all the way up as well. But again, I think it offers a nice balance. I think voice and high notes are really clear. I think the mid-range is excellent, and I think the low range is excellent as well. I typically stream music through Pandora via Bluetooth to my head unit, and I've been tremendously impressed with the overall sound quality and just its ability to adjust for whatever type of music is really coming your way. HD radio sounds amazing. Uh, you're able to plug like an SD card or even a USB thumb drive uh, into a port under your center console 
uh, that's designed as sort of a media center. I record things on an audio recorder for work, and I was pleasantly surprised when I plugged my audio recorder in that it was actually able to read that on my display, and uh, I was able to listen to some of the recordings I needed to, which was pretty great because I was able to actually start working before I got to work. If your plan is to make the stereo yours, if you're going to upgrade every component, you're an audiophile, if that's your jam, probably focus on the six speaker option. If you're getting a Laramie, Longhorn, or Limited trim, it's not really up to you anymore, and so you're going to be getting the 10 speaker because it is a 10 speaker stereo anyway. As I said earlier in the video, I really think that for $445, this is a must have option. I absolutely love it. I know it's not perfect, and I may do some upgrades moving forward, but I really don't feel the need to. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. You can also reach me at pnwreckage at gmail.com, and on Instagram, my username is pnwreckage. I'll see you guys on the next one.